Since I'm currently trying to power my solid state Tesla coil properly through an inverter circuit, I did some online research. Naturally, you either want to use a half bridge or a full bridge topology to let current flow through the primary coil in alternating directions. For testing purposes, I've been using N channel MOSFETs in a bootstrap full bridge configuration. And apparently, this circuit concept is approved by various Tesla coil schematics I found on the internet. But a decent chunk of online schematics also showcase another kind of switch, known as an IGBT aka insulated gate bipolar transistor. Now the question is, what's the difference? And when should I use a MOSFET and when an IGBT? Let's find out. First off, the basics. Just like with MOSFETs, there exists an N-channel type and a P-channel type IGBT. But since P-channel ones usually feature inferior characteristics, they are rarely used. As a practical example, I will utilize the RRGP 50 b 60 pd one N-channel IGBT, whose spinouts can be found in the datasheet. The G stands for gates, C for collector and E for emitter. And it is not a coincidence that labels were stolen from the MOSFET with its gate pin and the BJT with its collector and emitter pin. Because if we take a look at the simplified equivalent circuit of an IGBT, we can see that it basically consists of an N-channel MOSFET and a PNP BJT. But enough theory for now, let's rather create a simple light bulb switch circuit with the IGBT. In such a standard circuit, the emitter connects directly to ground, while the load connects between the supply voltage and the collector. By then applying a voltage higher than the gate threshold voltage to the gates, the IGBT turns on. And by using higher gate voltages up to 15 volts, the collector emitter voltage will always be lower at a given current flow, which means less power losses. Just make sure not to exceed the maximum gate emitter voltage. Now after removing the voltage source from the gates, the IGBT apparently stays conductive. The reason for that is its gates, which basically behaves like a MOSFET gates and thus can be modeled as a capacitor. While we successfully charge it up through the gate voltage and thus turn the IGBT on, the charge will afterwards just sit there and let the IGBT stay conductive. Unless of course we connect it to ground, so that the capacitor can discharge and the IGBT can turn off. To keep this process simple, we can use a 10 kilo ohm pulldown resistor between the gate and emitter to discharge the gate automatically and thus save us a bit of trouble. But if you are working with, for example, a PWM signal above 20 kHz, using a dedicated driver IC like the TC4420 is recommended. And yes, even though it states MOSFET driver, it can also be used for IGBTs, since they are so similar when it comes to the input side. Now all the IC basically does is connecting the gate either to the supply voltage or ground to charge it up or discharge it. This is important since we need a specific gate charge to turn the IGBT on and thus we must consider that the charge Q equals current I multiplied by the time T. With higher frequencies T becomes smaller but Q is still constant which means we have to increase the gate current. And the driver IC with its 6 amp current capability can usually handle this job. But not only that, driver ICs like the IR2113 can also be used for bootstrap operation and thus can provide the mandatory higher gate voltage for high side switching IGBTs, which not only require the gate threshold voltage to turn on, but additionally the load voltage. And speaking of turn on slash turn off times, if we compare the delay and rise slash fall times of the IGBT, which is around 145 nanoseconds and 240 nanoseconds, with the times of a generic MOSFET, which is around 32 nanoseconds and 160 nanoseconds, we can see that the MOSFET switches faster. 
This fact is also confirmed by the stated times in the datasheet of the transistors. And in conclusion that means that IGBTs are utilized for applications beneath 200 kHz and MOSFETs for everything above. Now let's get back to the light bulb example and see how much power loss each transistor creates. The MOSFETs with its range to source voltage drop of 0.024 volts at a current flow of 1.7 amps only creates a power loss of 0.04 watts while the IGBT with its collector to emitter voltage drop of 0.79 volts at a current flow of 1.65 amps creates a power loss of 1.3 watts. That is 32 times as much. And the reason for that is that the MOSFET's voltage drop rises linear with the current flow, which makes it behave like a constant resistance in its ohmic region. The IGBT however acts more like a BJT on the output and features a much higher voltage drop and thus resistance at a lower current flow. But on the other hand the common IGBT can handle more current than a MOSFET and also reaches a current level in which it is more efficient. Combine that with the higher collector to emitter breakdown voltage in comparison to the MOSFET strain to source breakdown voltage and you know that IGBTs are all in all practical to use as a medium fast, high voltage, high current switch. So using them for a solid state Tesla coil would definitely be possible. And if you want to know more about the individual components of the IGBT aka the BJT and the MOSFET then don't forget to have a look at their dedicated basics videos. As always don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.